Oppo Enterprises. Today we are going to be understanding how to read the direct online starter so we get to understand how to read a direct online starter and then carry out the job inside or so perhaps you're working on the motor control panel board whereby you need to assemble the different devices in the panel so that you get to um, start an electric motor. So we start with the direct online starter. So we start with we will need an, a fuse which will be here or a safety breaker. And then the next we we'll need a thermal relay. We need a thermal relay here and we're going to connect it to a close contact. And as we keep driving, you understand the reason why we are connecting to the close contact of the thermal relay. And then the next we are going to have our stop push button which in this case I'll call it S0, which is a stop push button, since it's normal close contact. And then we move now to our start push button, which is S1. So this is a start push button. So that's the reason why we had to use normal open contact, so that when we press, it closes now to allow current to flow from the upstream going to the downstream. So here we have our contactor, KN, I'll just call it as KN, connect to the open contact of the contactor, which in this case is going to be 13, 14 of the contactor. And then here now we have we have our coil, and then we connect now back to the neutral. So this is the face, and this is the neutral. So now what happens is, this is KM, KM, okay, this contactor. So this is the core of the contactor and this is the normal open of that same contactor, which is KM. So if we start having maybe two contactors, we start calling it as KM1, or perhaps KM2, and so on and so forth. So we start now with this uh, thermal relay, which is the 95-96 contact. So let me represent with a um, black marker. This is a 95 96 contact and this is the 11 12 contact so if you look at the contact of the push button you will see it as 11 12 which is a normal close contact and then for normal open contact on the push button you will see it as 13 14 and then for the contactor which is a normal open you are going to see it as 13 14 as well so here we are going to have this as our coil which we will just call it as k so now what happens is when we fit we fit the fuse or the circuit breaker, in this case we can call it the circuit breaker with a single phase supply which heats first on the close contact of the thermal relay which is 95-96. Current now flow since it's a close contact, it moves and gets to the point of uh, the push button which is S0 and then from the S0 now it moves as well gets to the upstream of the push button S1. At the same time, current will as well move and get to this level. Current moves and gets here as well. So at this point now, what happens? For us now to enable current now to flow to the coil so that the coil will be energized with the sufficient current, with the amount of voltage as well. So you notice that if you look at your coil of the relay or the contactor, you have to make sure that you fit that coil or the contactor with the desired amount of voltage which needs to refer to the coil. The reason why we are doing this is so that we don't damage the coil with either sufficient uh, more voltage or perhaps the coil might not function if we supply it with the less voltage which is intended to supply that coil so that for it to energize. So now what happens is once you press the push button now what happens is it's closed and then current now moves directly now and gets to the coil. Once the coil energizes, now we now go back to the law of um, the contact or it really what happens is if the coil energizes or its contact will change its state. That is we'll have normal open will change to normal close and then normal close will change to normal open. This is a law. 
So now what happens is once the oil energizes, what happens is all in the respective contacts which is attached to that contactor, they are going to change their states. So we have the normal open contact which is associated to this coil of the contactor. Once it's energized, now what happens is this contact now will close. This contact will close. And then since we know this is a push button, once you press, as you, you release your hands now, it retracts back. Once it retracts, this contact now remains open and current is not possible to move and then goes down. So now what happened now is since we have current that gets here, since the power was energized, this contact closes now, current now keep moving and remain keep the, the coil continuously energized due to this contact. So that's the reason why you hear some other books or some other lecturers will call it as a hold on contact. So this is a hold on contact for you to hold this coil to keep remaining energized to enable current flowing from the upstream coming to the field. Until then you're watching my enterprises.